Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to put graphics or patterns onto clothing in Photoshop. If you wanna follow along, I have included a link in the description of this video with all the assets that I use in the course of this tutorial. So go ahead, download those, and then let's dive into Photoshop. All right, let's go to File, Open, and I'm going to open this 01 file in the assets. So this is the file we're going to start with. And the first step is we need to prepare our fabric or a shirt or whatever item of clothing that we're going to put our graphics on. We need to prepare it. And the basic steps for preparing it is first getting rid of anything that's already on it. So we're going to have to get rid of this graphic here. And then we're gonna to have to cut it out so that it is its own element in Photoshop. So first, let's go ahead and make a copy of our layer. So we always have our original to refer back to as needed. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just get rid of this. Now this one's relatively simple because it's pretty small. Um, Obviously, your best case scenario is to take your photo or to find a photo where someone is wearing a white t-shirt or white fabric because that's the easiest thing to put graphics on. Now, in this case, this is relatively easy to get rid of. We're just going to go to edit and then go down to content or wear fill and Photoshop will figure out what it should put there. You can see it's done a really good job. So here, I want the output to just be on the current layer, and then I'm gonna say okay. All right, so there you go. We now have the graphics removed. The next step is cutting the shirt out of the background. Now, um, if we can use our AI-assisted tools like the quick selection, that's obviously gonna speed up our process, um, but unfortunately, these tools don't always work as you expect them to. So let's see if we can get a good selection here. And what I'm doing is I'm clicking and then adding rather than trying to paint it all in one stroke. This way, if um, I start painting and it selects way more than I wanted, like it just did there, I can do a undo and go back to this former state. Um, one thing I would recommend when you're using the quick selection tool is to use the tool a little bit slower. Um, and then also click often, right? So here I'm just kind of working my way down the shirt. You can see there it really doesn't uh, know what to do with this area. So I'm gonna try to kind of work around that. You can see no matter what I do here, it seems to just wanna select the rest of that. So I'll probably have to do the rest of this selection manually. Um, so, Let's go ahead and hit Q on the keyboard or go down here to this little icon and go into our quick mask. This will basically turn our existing selection into a mask that we can then work with here. So here I can go to my lasso tool, kind of start adding the rest of the shirt into this graphic here. So just go around this. I'm holding down option as I use the lasso tool. That gives me the polygonal lasso tool, uh, which is kind of like the click, click, click lasso tool as opposed to the freehand drawing lasso tool. Something like this. And then we're gonna fill this in with white. So I'm gonna go to edit, fill, foreground color, hit okay. All right, and then we'll grab this little piece here. So I'll click, hold down option after I've clicked. And then the shortcut for filling in with your foreground color rather than going up here in the menu is to hold down Option or Alt on a PC and then hit the Delete or Backspace key. And that will fill in this your selection with your foreground color. Because we're on our mask, it's filling it in with white and adding it to our selection. We'll go up here as well. Fill that in, option, delete, or alt, backspace. 
And it looks like we have most of the shirt now. Here I want to fill this in, this part of the arm in, but I want to fill it in with my background, or sorry, with black. So I'm going to switch these two colors. There's a little icon here that switches them. You can also hit X on your keyboard and that will switch those colors. So I want black to be the foreground and then I'll do option delete again. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's click on our quick mask and that'll put it back into a selection. And then I'm gonna go into the select and mask workspace and maybe just add a little bit of edge detection. Let's zoom in here and look at what that's doing to our edge. So it's just softening it up a little bit. Um, unfortunately, this tool uh, over the last couple of years has kind of been broken um, where it creates these hard steps or artifacts. I haven't found a good solution except kind of toggling the amount of pixels to see if you can get one that makes it disappear. You can also try switching to color aware, see if that makes an improvement. Um, in this one, it does seem to have made an improvement there. So let's use color aware and let's hit OK. All right. So now we have our selection. What I'm going to do is do Command J or you can go to Layer, New, Layer via Copy. There you can see the shortcut is Command J. That'll put our shirt on its own layer. And I'm going to call this Shirt. OK, so that's step one done. We've cleaned up our shirt and we've also isolated it in our file. The next step is I need to create a displacement map and a displacement map is a black and white image that the distort tool in Photoshop can use to distort an image. So let's go to file and actually let's go to image and we're going to go down here to duplicate. And what this will do is it'll make a new copy, meaning it'll make a new file. And here, what I want to do is I want to call this displace and I want to click on this duplicate merged layers only hit. OK. So here you can see we now have a file. It's been flattened. I'm going to go to image mode and change it to grayscale and then hit discard. OK, so this is our file and this is what we're going to use to influence the pixels when we make a distortion in this file. Now, I don't want the distortion to be kind of at this pixel level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blur out this fine detail. So let's go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. And let's see here. That's too much. I still want like these full fold details. I just don't want the fabric detail. So probably somewhere around eight pixels. I think that gets rid of enough of the fabric detail while still keeping this nice larger detail. Okay, so that looks good. The other thing I might want to do is go to Image, Adjustments, Curves. And you can see here that our histogram information is primarily on the right side. Now, when you're doing any kind of overlay image, you want as much as possible for that histogram to be in the middle. So if we look at our histogram here, you can see how our curve is influencing it. If I push this to the right, it's moving this information, this kind of block, further into the middle of the histogram. I can also go here and kind of take this side down, and that'll also help push that toward the middle. Now I don't want to overdo this, so I'll probably just leave it about there, and I can also maybe just add a little bit of an S-curve as well to help me out here. Okay, so let's hit okay. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and save this and we'll save this into our assets folder and we'll call it displays. Now, I want to save this as a Photoshop document um, and then let's hit save. Now, there's already one in there, so let's cancel this and let's call it displace 02 and then hit save. All right, I don't need this open anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and close it. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is create a template for our graphics. So to do that, I'm going to first go to my rectangular marquee tool, and I want to just make a selection around the shirt. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a square selection, make sure it covers the entire shirt. 
Um, if you start making your selection and you need to move it, a cool trick is you can hold down the space bar and that'll allow you to move your active selection. You can kind of place it where you want in the top and left. All right, so I'm just lining it up to the shirt there. I can let go of the space bar and now I'm back to my active selection. I can just finish that off. So there you go. You can see my selection is right to the top of the shirt there, to the left side and the right side. I'm gonna make a new layer and then I wanna fill this with white. So I'm gonna default my colors with that little icon there or hitting D on the keyboard and then click on this one, which switches them or hit X on the keyboard. And then we can go to edit, fill with foreground color, hit okay. All right, I'm gonna drop my selection with command D. And next thing I wanna do here is I want to put a transparency pattern on this. So let's go ahead and make our transparency pattern. I'm gonna to go to file new and just create a 1000 pixel by 1000 pixel file. Hit OK, make sure it's RGB. Hit Create, and then I'm gonna to go to View, Guides, New Guide Layout, and here I want two columns, two rows, and I wanna make sure the width and the gutter is zero and that there's no margin, and then I'm gonna hit OK. All right, so now I have this file divided into four squares. What I'm gonna do is, with my Marquee Selection Tool, I'm gonna to select this square, and then hold down Shift, and select this square. So now I have both of these selected. I'm gonna switch my foreground color to black and then go to Edit, Fill. All right, and then I'm gonna drop my selection with Command-D or Deselect, and then we'll go to Edit, Define Pattern. We're gonna call this Transparency. Let's hit OK. Okay, and then we can close this. We don't need to save it. And on this layer here that we've created, I'm gonna to go to here and then pattern overlay. And here I wanna change the blend mode to normal. And then I'm gonna click here and go to the pattern that we just created. And that'll create this transparency effect. You can adjust the scale of it here and that'll just affect the size of that transparency. And we're gonna leave it around 30 uh, percent. So let's put it on 30 and then here we can maybe make it 50. Actually, I want it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to make it 40, eh, maybe even smaller, 30. There you go. And then we'll hit OK. And the next thing I'm going to do, and this is a very important step, is you want to turn this into a smart object. So let's change the name of it to graphic. And then I'm going to right mouse click and go to convert to smart object. OK, so we now have our smart object. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this on multiply. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to distort this so that it looks like it belongs on the shirt. So we're gonna use our displacement map for that, but there's also a couple other tools we can use. I'm gonna show you all of them kind of in the sequence that you could use them but realize that all these tools do a similar thing and you don't need to use all of them. You just need to use the ones that you need. So the first one is up under edit and that is puppet warp. So what this allows you to do is kind of create anchor points so you can add anchor points. And then once you've added some anchor points, you can start moving these anchor points around. So here, because this fabric is gonna kind of wrap around his shoulder, I might do something like this with these two anchor points, just kind of make this look more like it's contouring the way the actual fabric would onto the body here, right? So, oops, do this, and then maybe here we can add another point, just drag this down so it's matching the way his shirt is contoured here. Maybe pull in the edges so that it's wrapping around his body a little bit. So there you go. You can see we've done that and it's kind of contoured the shirt better to his body. Now that's one way of doing it. Um, let's go undo Puppet Warp. It's transform. So let's go to edit, free transform. And then here, this is the one I want. So 
click on that. And this, similar to the last one, gives you these tools. So here we could also split it maybe here and maybe we'll split it one more time about there. And then what we can do is take these points and start moving them just like we did with the puppet warp. But this gives you a different way of controlling it with these bergiers. But in effect, it's doing the same thing, which is distorting your fabric to kind of match the contours of the shirt. And this, this pattern that we have on there kind of helps show us what that shirt would look like. So something like this. And then we'd hit the check mark there. And you can see this better matches up with the shirt. Okay, so that's option number two. I'm going to show you option number three. Let's go ahead and undo the free transform. Option number three is the liquify tool. So that's under filters, you're going to go to liquify. And here you're kind of using a, a mesh pattern overlay. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse the face aware liquify and go to the view options. And here I want to show my backdrop so I can see what he looks like. And I want it to just be the background. And then I want to take the opacity of this down so I can see both at the same time. So this gives me a good idea. Now what I can do is use these various tools. And the main ones you're going to use is this one, the forward warp. And by changing the size of your brush, what you're going to do is start pushing those pixels around. So this kind of gives you another way of doing it. And just like the other tools, it's doing the same thing, which is contouring your fabric layer here to match the shirt. So you can see here, even with this logo, kind of gives us a reference of how that shirt is distorting or how the fabric is distorting because it's sitting on top of him. So something like this. And then we'd hit OK. And you can see that that's contoured that shirt. So those are your three options for contouring the shirt, whichever one you're most comfortable with or whichever one works best for what you're using is the one you should use. Um, let's go ahead and undo the liquify. For this one, I think using just the simple transform is the best. So I'm gonna go to edit, free transform. I'm just gonna do this one again. So we'll go click on this to turn it into the warp. Maybe add a split right here where I have my graphics and then start moving these to better match the contours of this fabric. Something like this. Okay, so that's good enough. Next thing I want to do is the distort. So here, what we're going to do is go to filter, distort, and then go to displace. I'm going to set this to 20. And I want to make sure this is clicked on embed file data and smart object, and then hit OK. And here we're going to go to the displacement file that we created, which is displace 02 and hit that. What you can see here is it's using the black and white information to create some folds in this fabric. So that looks really good. Now what we're going to do is take this and clip it to our shirt layer. So to do that, I'm going to hold Option or Alt on a PC, and go between the two layers and click there. So now our graphics are only on the shirt itself. Okay, so we've now set up our file. And the beauty of having a smart object here is I can double click this and place my graphics in it. So I'm gonna go File, Place Embedded, and inside our Assets folder, we have a couple uh, images from Raw Pixel. I'm gonna go ahead and take this one and place it. And this is our graphic. We're just gonna make this a little bit bigger. Let's say about there. And then I can turn off this background layer, the graphic. Just that was a reference and we don't need it anymore, but I still want it in my file in case I need to make any changes in the future. And then we're going to go ahead and close this and hit save. 
And right away, you can see this graphic is now in the shirt. You can see it's a little bit too far to the left. So let's double click here, maybe make this a bit smaller with Command Transform and move it a little bit to the right. Let's close it, see how that looks. And there you go, that looks really good. We do have a little bit of an odd thing happening there. Um, and that's coming from this displays which otherwise is doing a really nice job. So what I might do here is go into the displace. Let's see if maybe we turn off or take down the horizontal scale to 10. And that's better. Okay, so there you can see we now have our graphic on there. It looks like it's contouring to the shirt, which is what we want. And then that, the last step, is we want this to look a little bit more like it belongs on the fabric. And to do that, we're going to use Blend If. So let's double click on the layer here. That's going to bring up our layer styles. And under the blending options, we have this Blend If. And Blend If allows you to blend two layers based on the luminosity of those layers. So in this case, I want the light parts of the underlying shirt to not blend with this. So if I start moving this to the right, you can see what's happening. Those highlights are coming out of the shirt. Now that's essentially what I want, but I don't want it this strong. So what I'm gonna do is hold down Option and split this. I'm gonna leave this end here and then just drag this end more and more to the left, kind of get that look I want. Now, depending on how kind of old or washed you want this, you can move this all the way to the left and that'll look like a stonewashed shirt. Or you can move it more to the right if you want it to look more like this is, you know, freshly applied graphics there. So something like this. You might also just take your opacity slightly down, show a little bit of that original shirt coming through there. So maybe to 80%. So something like that I think looks good. Let's hit OK. And then the last thing you might do is take your shirt layer here, make a copy of it, put this above here. Let's make sure this graphic is still linked to that. And we're gonna call this shadows. And with this layer, I'm gonna to go to image adjustments and I just wanna make it black and white. So I'm gonna take the saturation all the way down. And then I wanna to go to image adjustments curves and I want to just take this and make it a lot brighter. So it's we're just using this for some additional shadows. And then we can put this on multiply. Depending on how much shadows you want to add, you can take the opacity on that up or down. Also, if you just want to add the shadows to your graphic, you can do that by linking it here. So those are two options there. Um, and for some graphics like this, you probably don't even need that extra shadows. Although sometimes when you're changing the color of a white shirt, you do want to add some shadows. So those are your basic steps. Once you have this in place, the beauty of it is you can easily change this graphic by just double clicking here. Now I can go file, place embedded, uh, choose this other image here, kind of match up where I want it. So something like this. Turn off my other one here, save this file and it's gonna update, and there you go. You now have a template. You can put whatever graphics you want on that shirt. So that's the basic steps of putting any type of graphics on clothing. Now, if you have a much more complicated file, so let's go to File, Open, and I have this O2 template file. Now, this is a much more complex file, and the reason for that will become very obvious. So here we have not only one shirt, um, but we also have, you know, these collars, we have these buttons here, we have uh, arm sleeves, we have, you know, this folded here. So there's a lot more uh, elements happening here, but the basic steps are the same. So this is our original file here. You can option click to see that. This is what the original file looks like. I'm gonna option click again, and then let's open this pattern. So here you can see we have our legs, and then we have our pattern copy, which is a copy of this smart object here. And the beauty of a smart object is the more copies you make of it in your Photoshop file, 
all of them are still a reference to your original smart object. So here you can see we have a pattern sitting on top of the legs, and that's giving the texture or fabric pattern on those legs. And you can see if I open this up, I've given it a puppet warp and I've given it a displace. And if you open these up, you can see they all have either a puppet warp and a displace or a puppet warp and a transform or some have a liquify. But those all have gone through the steps that I showed you in the previous project. And then finally here for the collar, and the buttons, I just have a layer that's a color layer set to multiply, but it does have the same blend if options here. So now on this one, I don't want as much of the highlights because the background is basically white. So we have it just enough to show some of those clothing highlights there. So just about there. But that's the basic file setup. And again, we also do have a shadow layer. On this one, having the shadow layer is more important just because the original fabric is so light that without it, it does feel just kind of pasted on. So that shadow layer helps a lot in this file. Now here I have at the very top of the file, my reference. Now this, you can see the fill is on zero. So if I turn it on or off, nothing actually changes. And I've named the file change this. And the beauty of this is if I go in here and click, you can see this is the pattern um, that I have in the file, but we can do whatever else we want in here. So let's go to file, place embedded again, and I'm going to grab this image from raw pixel. And this is a floral pattern. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on my guides here. I want to make sure this lines up to this square here. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn these off and then take this, hold down option and make some copies of it. So this isn't a perfect seamless pattern. Um, and this trick certainly works better with a perfect seamless pattern, but for purposes of demonstration, let's go ahead and close this. Hit save and let's see what happens in our template file. And bada boom, you can see we now have this. And you can see because I've done all that previous work that this is contouring to the various elements of her jacket. Now with this file, having done all the work to set it up, you can easily try different fabrics. You can see what different stuff looks like on her outfit. And again, this really works best when you're working with almost a blank canvas. Like, so this one, uh, we have an almost white suit, which is great because now I can put any fabric on it just using the multiply blend mode. So there you have it. That's how you put graphics or patterns onto clothing in Photoshop. And hopefully in the course of this, you learn some more about Photoshop, how it works, how to use smart objects, and other tips and tricks and techniques that you can use in your own projects. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please leave a comment, share this video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. And if you want more professional training in Photoshop, you can check out my courses and my assets at nuclei.com. I also have a big Photoshop course coming out very soon. So keep your eye out for that. Otherwise, here are some tutorials to check out. And I'll see you next time.